Hello and welcome to how to customize collisions on your meshes. So let's bring in an example mesh and I'm bringing in this SM chair. And this SM chair has a default collision set up like so. If we go over to show, we can see simple collision like this. Okay. And this is a very simple mesh, um, but it's the collision mesh. Okay. And Collision meshes have certain rules. One of the rules is that it has to be what we call convex. It can't have any concave elements. So then it becomes a problem when you want to say have the chair actually represented as a chair. So you can actually stand on it properly. At the moment, you won't be able to stand on this. It's like a slope. So how do we actually get around making this more chair-like? Well, first thing we do is we're going to delete the existing collision. Use it by selecting it and just hitting delete. Alternatively, you can also go up to collision up top and do remove collision. So now we're going to customize this collision uh, in one way first, and then I'll show you the second way. So the first way, we're going to go up to collision and we're going to add a simple box, a box simplified collision. And it will automatically try and wrap it around the whole entire object, but you don't need to have it like this. You can scale it, rotate it and reposition it however you wish. So I'm going to make my base of my chair like so and it's important to note that you don't really have too many options here where you can really manipulate the uh the boxes here so do your best you can um but you can also bring this into say blender or maya and re-import it with collision meshes already made by hand as long as they're convex you're okay so here we've got a box there and then i'm going to go up to the collision and add another one and I can reposition this one to be my arms of my chair. So just do shape it and position it how I want it. So a bit of a rotation. That. And we're going to drag out another one using the alt drag technique. And we're just going to rotate this one and position that over this arm. And then I'm going to do that again, but this time this is going to be the back of the chair. Let's bring that in, make that a bit taller, stretch out a bit further. Okay. So things like this, having the snaps turned off does help. I do recommend turning them off. But we can just adjust this however you want. Like so. Okay. And this is now, oh, I didn't duplicate it, but you get the gist. Uh, you, you can see now it will follow this sort of shape. And if I go to where it says lit here and go to player collision, you can see now the shape of the chair is more chair like. And that means it will respect collisions and the player movement on it more accurately. Now I said there was two methods. This is just the one method. So I'm going to show you the other one. I'm going to go back to lit here and I'm going to remove these collisions. Okay. And you can also add other shapes to it. You don't have to add just boxes. You can add any of these ones. Uh, but let's show a different one. Let's now go over to auto convex collision. When you bring this up, it's going to bring up a little box down here. This will give you some details. And these settings are going to change the precision and the amount of vertices that your collision mesh is going to be generating. Now keep in mind, the more you have, the more performance it's going to take up. Collision is used for a lot of things, so if you can get away with not having it super complex, the better. This is why we recommend using simple collisions rather than complex collisions for a variety of things in your game. So we're going to go over to here, I'm going to leave hole count at 4, max hole vert at 16, and leave the position here at what's that, 100,000 and hit apply. And when I've done that, you can see here, it's now shrink wrapped my chair. Now we still don't have this dip in the middle, but we can see it's a lot tighter around the edges of this chair than otherwise. You can see it's gone underneath here, that's fine. But if I want to make that more precise, I can just remove that collision, go back down here and tweak these numbers to my liking. So let's increase the hole count here. I'm gonna to go to this one to eight max hole verts i'm going to go to 32 
and then hit apply. And now we can see it's now going down a little bit on the chair and doing this. Now, as I said, out of the two methods, this one is probably the least preferable, but it can give you some good results sometimes. So just be aware of that when messing about with this. You may want, you may prefer the uh, the uh, other collision method to get more accurate sort of shapes. But this is a, a short, quick workaround if you want to save time. So we're going to do one more time to see if I can get it even more accurate. We increase the whole count. We'll crack this way up to 32 as well. And hit apply. Maybe I should have turned that hole position up a bit higher. But there we go. We can see now the holes here. Holes, by the way, are the, the hole shapes. Little shapes here. So that's one shape there. That's one hole. Another hole. Another hole. And so forth. And you can see it's how it sort of used these different hole shapes around. Um, and the hole, max hole verts is how many vertices each hole can have. Okay, that's what that means. So you can see it's a lot more accurate in that shape position there. Okay. And there you go. And that's how you customize your collisions or your meshes. If you like this how-to and want to see more how-to videos, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can catch all my videos early before everyone else, all from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you like what they are do, please hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.